Is it all right if, uh, if we send things flying through the air? Is that okay? Oh, good. All right, is it all right if there might be some fire involved? Okay, excellent. And uh, is it all right if this stage might be a little messier when we're all done? See, you guys are saying that. These guys are going, wait, what? What did we sign up for? All right, I'll tell you what, let's get started by doing uh, a little bit of a uh, demo here. This is, uh, my name, by the way, is, uh, is Bob Flugfeller. I go by Science Bob sometimes. And uh, just so you know, I am on, uh, on the social media scene. So, uh, I, in fact, you know what I'm going to do here? I thought I'd do. Let's do a, a tweet out of you guys because you guys... Go ahead, fix your hair, make sure it looks good. We'll do, a, we'll do a quick tweet out of the audience, and here's what I'd like you to do. Um, make it look like, uh, like you just got a really big idea, like you're a maker, and you're like, ah, oh, I know what I'm going to build next. Here we go, three, two, one. All right, good, here, we get you guys too. Nice. All right, oh, you guys too. Here we go. All right, so we're going to try to tweet that out a little bit later. Uh, we have fun on my Facebook page. I'm really into optical illusions. If you like optical illusions, I like posting lots of cool optical illusions. So you can check that out. All right, so now what I'd like to do is a little something I called random acts of science. So I want to give you something that you can do at home. And this involves three materials. One, something called a film canister. Now, a long, long time ago, when people wanted to take pictures, they would have to use this stuff called film. Have you ever heard of it? No. Uh, so they would put the film in these canisters and it would keep them in an oxygen-free environment and they would last for a long, long time. So I picked this up at an antique store, but chances are if you go in your junk drawer way in the back, you might find some of these. You can also find them at like CVSs and pharmacies that develop film. Uh, then we also have some water in that and lastly, half of an Alka-Seltzer tablet, which your parents probably have if you're kids. Okay? So that's good. That's all you need. The last thing I need is some volunteers. So if you are interested in trying out this, yeah, just uh, hold on. Where'd my little thing go? Here we go. Uh, yeah, raise your hand, and we will see if we can get some kids to volunteer. All right, we got a one. Hey, here we go. We got a two. Here we go, we got a three. Here we go, we got a four. You guys can fight over it. Here we go, we got five. We got six. In the back, anyone? Incoming. All right, if you got one of those, come on up here and stand behind one of these arrangements here. Come on up, come on up, here you go. Good job, good job, come on up. We're gonna turn you all into rocket scientists. Get your goggles on. Stand behind one of these things here. There you go. Get one of those little setups. Here, you can come on the side here. You got one there. One, two. All right, we're good. All right, excellent. A big hand for our future rocket scientists. Thank you. And a stowaway. She might be a little small for this one. Was, did, how did you, you got goggles? Oh, she, you can help her. Did I throw her goggles? She looked much older from a distance. No, bring her up here, but you're going to help her. Okay? Here, bring her up here. You're going to give her a hand. All right, rocket scientists, here's how it's going to work. When I give you the sign, what you're going to do is you're going to take that little tablet. Not yet. You're going to drop it into that container. Not yet. And then you're going to cap it. And then you're going to flip it. And then you're going to step back. Okay. We're going to go over that again. Don't worry. What I want you to do now is practice putting the lid on first. You should hear a good snap. If it's not working, it's upside down. There you go. You hear that snap? There it is. There it is. No, no, don't put it in yet. No, 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 yeah, just here. You're going to have to put the cap on. Experience shows me hands that small can't do it. All right. Excellent. You guys all got it? All right. You go ahead and take the cap off if you can. That's the harder part, believe it or not. Oh, this is so exciting. Are you guys enjoying the build-up, or are you just bored already? Okay, here we go. We are all set. So just to remind you, what we're going to do is we're going to drop, we're going to cap, we're going to flip, and then we're going to step back. All right, you're going to need your cap off there. All right, I think we are officially ready. On your mark, get set, drop, cap. Make sure you hear that snap. Flip it over. 
don't fall over into a giant container of liquid nitrogen. The insurance company doesn't like that. All right, here we go. Now, we have what we call the most boring science experiment. You're like, what's this all about? Boo. This is, nothing's happening. But what's actually happening is pressure is building up. There's some bubbles that are going on in there. And as the pressure builds up, so you start getting something like that, and suddenly we get, oh, we are, we go. We had a full contingency. Um, that was great. Awesome. All right. Now, you guys did a fine job. And I have a question for you. Do you guys like making things and doing sciencey things? Yes. All right, then keep those goggles, bring them home, and use them well, all right? All right. Give them a big hand. That was awesome. <laughs> all right. So here it is. That's all you need. So this is kind of, I like how you can combine science and everyday things. And we'll show you a little bit more about that. We got all sorts of demos we're going to do here. By the way, if you really get a good budget, you can do that with a thousand film canisters. It's a lot more fun. Yeah. So there we are, a thousand film canisters. The next act up was P. Diddy. They couldn't start the P. Diddy segment because there were film canisters everywhere. It was a huge mess. But they still invited me back. I don't know why. All right. So uh, this whole maker thing, uh, I love science, but uh, originally I started off as a maker. Uh, this is me at five years old. Uh. So I know it looks like I have an action figure, but um, some dads and moms here might remember that they used to make model kits that were the Universal Studios monsters. Yeah, Polar Lights made these kits. And I was fascinated by that. I didn't want to build cars, I wanted to build monsters. So I built this at five years old, the smelly glue and everything, and shall I point out, I did it with a broken arm. So uh, that was kind of my intro into Maker was, building little model kits. And then that led up to building uh, rockets, model rockets and things. Here is a little display, custom made for uh, Captain Kirk here. And the background is almost indistinguishable from actual space. Isn't that amazing? Um, and then I got a job. And when you get a job and you get a paycheck, then you can make bigger things. So there was always something I wanted to make when I was 10 years old but I never had enough money. So kids, at some point in your life, get a job, and you might be able to get your own R2-D2. So I was able to build an R2-D2. This is the R2-D2 in my uh, living room, and this R2-D2 actually is now in a maker space in Somerville, Massachusetts, a 40,000-square-foot um, maker space called the Artisan's Asylum, uh, where amazing things are created. A lot of Kickstarters have come out of there. Uh, so it's pretty cool. All right, and then I was like, all right, well now I want to take my, I'm a teacher, so I want to take my maker skills and see if I can use them in teaching. And part of it was building a classroom. So I got, I said, can I modify the classroom just a little bit to kind of make it interesting? And they said, sure. And so uh, I kind of modified it. And so mm, I wanted to make my classroom look like the Starship Enterprise. And so that is what it looks like now. And there's other elements that you can't quite see in it. But it was a lot of fun. And then, as a maker, you want to make more makers. So one of the projects that we did with them is this marble track device. And I gave every student a blank board of masonite. And I said, a marble's going to come in here, and a marble's going to leave there. Make as many cool things happen between those two points as you can. And then we connected them all together. And they were encouraged to decorate them and put their own twist to it. And we ended up with this crazy uh, marble contraption. And they learned about failure, because they never worked the first time, and repeatability and trial and error. It was pretty cool. Uh, they used a lot of found materials. I love this one, the ice cream scooper marble dropper. So, but you know, some kid's going through his drawer and he's like, oh, ice cream scooper. Whether he asked his parents if he could use it or not, I don't know. But look, he had to put a counterbalance on it, so it was a lot of fun. All right, and uh, by the way, kids, when you go around the house looking for stuff, I want to show you, see this thing from Ghostbusters? This is a uh, EKG device. That was made from a shoe polisher. Um, the uh, Obi-Wan's communicator started off as a lady's razor. Add a few pieces of metal to it, you got a high-tech device. 
And R2-D2, a uh, little uh, eye thing there, um, that was a reading light from an airplane. So you never know where you will find inspiration. It doesn't take big budgets. And the huge octopus thing, did you guys see that yet? At some point, go out, you'll see the huge octopus fire thing, and you start getting closer to it, like, oh, that's a hubcap. Oh, those are cupcake tins. Oh, that's like a storage container. So anyway, um, so I want to show you a demo now. Is that okay? And it has to do with a flask. This is an experiment known as the elephant's toothpaste. It's classic. It's been around for years. And uh, I was asked to go and do this on Jimmy Kimmel Live. And normally, every time I had ever seen it, it was done in something called a graduated cylinder. This is how teachers did this. They poured the chemicals in, it went up the graduated cylinder, and it foamed out. It was great. So I was like, okay, I'll come do it on Jimmy Kimmel. Looked all over for a graduated cylinder. Couldn't find one. Couldn't find one. But for some reason, in my school, there was a ridiculously ginormous flask. And I was like, hmm, maybe I could do it in a flask. And I looked online, has anyone done it in a flask before? And no one had. So I set it up in my classroom, and uh, I want to show you kind of how the flask might be a little different. So the graduated cylinder version, it kind of foams up and then comes down. This is a little bit different. In here, we have got something known as hydrogen peroxide. Not the stuff you get at the pharmacy, though. This stuff is a little more potent. To that, I am going to add some soapy solution there. We'll slur that around. Then, I didn't quite have enough blue, but I did have some red, and so I thought I'd try purple. I've never done purple before. Should we do purple? All right. Come on. All right, let's try red. Red's awesome. Let's do red. There we go. A little bit of red color in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to break apart the molecules, and we're going to use something known as a catalyst. Catalyst makes it go very fast. So I was expecting it to just kind of go up and foam out, but I'll show you something a little different happened. Would you count me down in four, three, two, one? We poured that in. <laughs> okay, here we go. And we get that. There we go. <laughs> it was a little slow there. I was nervous. Just to give you an idea. I did this yesterday, and it went a little high. So they got nervous. But I'll give you an idea. That's what it looked like on Jimmy Kimmel. And any time I do a science demo, that's the expression I'm going for right there. Um, we literally got it stuck on the ceiling, um, and it, we had to wait for it to come down. Uh, so that was kind of a lot of fun. Now, of course, everyone does it on a flask. There's some guy in, on Fallon a couple of weeks ago that uh, did it also on a flask. It's definitely the way to go if you're going to do it. Oh, yeah. Then they asked me to come and do it on Live with Kelly, and I didn't want to do the flask again, so um, they allowed me to custom make 5,000 milliliter graduated cylinder, and that is the effect we got. Isn't that beautiful? I love science. All right, cool. I know, it's like a giant mushroom thing. Uh, we also made a nine foot tall um, uh, dry ice tornado. This was based on a little experiment that I had seen online and something at the Museum of Science. And it had never been done before. And Dyson was very nice, they donated the fans. And I hadn't tried it. I was very happy when it worked. So they didn't send it to me, uh, you know, not knowing. And then finally, um, one thing I've always wanted to make was a hoverboard. But the technology to make hoverboards isn't out there. So I said, let's see how close we can get. And I sent this drawing over to the folks at uh, Jimmy Kimmel. And I said, what do you think? We're going to need some really, really strong magnets. Um, and they said, uh, yeah, can you send us a video of it and we can try building it? And I was like, there is no video of it. No one's ever done it. Um, so they got to work and I worked with them and we were actually able to create a completely magnetic uh, floating hoverboard. Um, it's strapped in so it doesn't flip over and crush the user, which is a bad thing. So it doesn't move yet, but um, we're getting pretty close. And so, uh, and that is uh, Steve who helped uh, coordinate it. So kind of cool. All right, shall we show you another demo? I'm ready. All right, so let me show you another one. This is kind of, uh, in some ways, a, uh, one of my favorite demos because uh, we see a floating balloon here, and we all know if a balloon floats, it's filled with what, guys? Helium. I don't like helium. Helium's kind of boring, so I actually filled this one with hydrogen. 
Hydrogen is just, it's light, lighter than air, so balloons float, but it's more interesting because it's what we call flammable. <laughs> so, I want to show you what happens if a flame gets introduced to a balloon filled with hydrogen. Now, unlike what you might have been told, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're good. Unlike what you might have been told, hi, uh, helium balloons, nothing will happen. Hydrogen balloons, though, are slightly different. Would you like to see? Yeah. Of course you would. I tell you, if there were three people in this audience, I'd be so happy just to do the show because I like doing this stuff. All right, here we go. Flame introduced to a hydrogen balloon in three, two, one. Ooh, that was fun. <laughs> that was good. Oh, thank you. Great. Oh, that was great. All right. Great. So people have been doing that for years. It's, uh, it's a great experiment. Um, and uh, it's a great demonstration, as long as you're not on a giant blimp at the time. And uh, so then the question is, well, let's put some maker skills to this. And uh, so a wonderful uh, high school teacher in Hawaii came up with another way to demonstrate this principle. Here's what we're going to do. I've got a can of Pringles here, which I've turned upside down. I have drilled a hole in the top, and I have piped into here a balloon filled with hydrogen. I'm going to open the valve. When I open the valve, the hydrogen is going to go. It's going to fill up the Pringles can, which, by the way, still has potato chips in it. And it's going to purge out all of the air and completely replace it with hydrogen. Then I will light the top of this, and it will burn like a gentle candle. <laughs> but as it's burning, it's going to pull in some oxygen. And when you get just the right mix of hydrogen and oxygen, you get what I like to call rocket fuel. That's how the shuttle goes up. There's a big tank of hydrogen, a big tank of oxygen. They mix it, and up goes the shuttle. Awesome. Um, and so this, we're going to see if we can actually get this to uh, uh, go up a little bit. Sound good? I think so. All right. So I will now open this, and we should see the balloon start to go down and down. So we are purging the air out. Awesome. We're all standing in wonder, watching a balloon shrink. There we go. Down it goes. All right, excellent. Now I'm going to pull that out. I'll put that over there. And now we will light it. Oh, it's burning like a gentle candle. How romantic. Uh, yeah, so you can barely see the flame because hydrogen burns very cleanly. It's one of the reasons they want to use it in cars, because it burns very cleanly. But What's happening now is the oxygen is coming in. You can't really see that. But eventually the mix is going to get just right. And yeah, let's see, that happens. That's good. That's how you open a bag of chips, huh? That's good. Oh. That was warm. That's, that's delicious. All right. So that was good. Oh, I love this gig. All right. Also, I wanted to point out. When you become a maker, and I know a lot of you already are, you will find other makers, and they will make cool stuff. This is the basement of a friend of mine who is really into Ghostbusters. Thank you. So he said, I want to build some Ghostbusters proton packs. Uh, it took him about eight packs before he was satisfied. He was so particular. These are four of his good ones that he liked. These are two of the ones which anyone would think are amazing, but he's like, no, they're not perfect. But then this one in the back was actually worn by Bill Murray during the Spike TV Awards because they needed a really good-looking pack. Um, so you get to hang out with people who do that. This is uh, Starship Serenity um, from the TV show Firefly, sorry, which I don't have Netflix, so I haven't been able to see. But anyway, um, and uh, helping me out today is Jacob LaRocca. Uh, we met at a makerspace, and he decided to take the Serenity ship and make it entirely out of duct tape. And came up with this. And if you, I don't know if you can appreciate the detail in that, but it's awesome. <laughs> Weighs over 20 pounds and there's no internal structure. It's entirely made out of duct tape. Uh, it's awesome. He actually has an F-14 uh, jet with him. If, so if you like making things with duct tape, check out his F-14 jet he brought with him. Uh, and now I get to do this. And I've been very, 
very pleased. I had a couple of you guys come in, and you actually had my recent books that I wrote. Um, here's the idea. So I noticed that there's lots of great storybooks that kind of have a science twist. We all know Magic School Bus and all that. And there's great experiment books, um, which are great. And I got a call from a publisher, and, I, and he said, we want to mix these two, and no one's ever done it. Is there a way to create a storybook that also has experiments? So I got together with another author, Steve Hawkinsmith, and we decided that we wanted to go with a formula of Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew type books, and then just blend in a little bit of MacGyver. <laughs> and so we ended up with what's known as the Nick and Tesla series. We are up, thank you. Um, we are up to three books now. We've got a fourth one coming out, and now we're working on a fifth. Um, and the idea behind it is these, this brother and sister, 12-year-old brother and sister, go and stay with their crazy uncle um, for a summer, and they get into trouble, and they have to build gadgets to get out of trouble. So what we do is we actually give the instructions to build the gadgets that the characters make in the book. And so they've got some things that are really simple and electrical, some things that are more complicated and use more physics. Uh, we've got a Diet Coke Mentos-powered automobile. Um, we have got a paper plate hovercraft. Um, so just kind of different projects. And right now we're starting to get in pictures from kids that have been building these, and that's been really, really exciting. Um, oh, yeah, here's a tripwire-powered hidden camera in a picture. I don't know what they're going to use that for, but if you get the book, watch out. Oh, and I'll show you right now. Book four is not out yet, but we did something different. We decided to combine lots of little projects into one big project. So you guys are going to be the first ones to see this. All right, the ones in the presentation yesterday were the first ones. But you're the first real ones to see this because I like you guys better. All right, this is it. It is a gadget glove. So the instructions are to build this. It's got voice recorders. It's got ultraviolet lights in it. It's got alarm signals. And um, it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm looking to see um, how people build these different gadgets. As far as I know, the publishers have sent some books. And so we are going to be able to sell. And I can sign some books after this. And where did we figure out we're doing that? Right out here somewhere? Like 10 minutes? I got to help Jacob clean up. Otherwise, that would just be mean of me. Um, but I'll help Jacob clean up, and then uh, I'll go out and be happy to sign some books. All right, cool. Oh, is that right if I do one more demo? All right, excellent. So this is my favorite demo. I'm sorry, it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with being a maker, but I just really like it, so I get to do it, I guess. Um, this is one that uses liquid nitrogen. So we've had, this is about 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is 321 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Now, when you take a breath, 80% of what you breathe in is nitrogen. Most people think it's oxygen. About 20% is oxygen. So most of it's nitrogen. And if you cool that down and compress it, it gets very, very cold, which is where we get our 321 degrees below zero, or I think it's 196 Celsius for the youngins in there. So when I pour it in here, you'll see right away it's very, very cold. Oh, that looks fun. You wouldn't want to take a bath in here. All right, that is probably, well, this is Maker Faire. <laughs> there we go. All right, excellent. Actually, we have to ship this container. We can't ship it full, can we? That would be bad. Oh, man, this is going to be good. All right. Now. To that, what I would like to add is some near-boiling hot water. This gives us a difference of approximately 500 degrees between the two. When that happens, we're going to vaporize the water and at the same time condense it. And if all goes well, we should get a little cloud. Does that sound cool? All right. Shall we see it? All right, I will only do this if you help count me down in 10. Nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo! That was a good one. 
Sorry, it's just water. Everything's fine. All right. Wow. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for coming. One last word. Thank you. All right. Go out, make cool stuff, come back at Maker Faire and show it off. Uh, you guys all dry here? Okay, good. And uh, have a great rest of the fair. It'll be an awesome experience. I'll be out to talk to you later. Thanks. Thank you so much.